not much uh, is the short answer in t the context of lease hard enfranchisement the act isn't immediately effective um it's subject to a commencement date being announced by statutory instrument the current indication given by government in the house of lords in april was that the commencement date was likely to be around late 2025 or early 2026 so although the uh, changes have made it onto the statute book they're not yet effective um, so there was a proposal proposal to either completely remove or to cap existing ground rents um, in current leases that didn't make it through the wash up at the end of parliament there is a limited uh, cap on uh, ground rents as part of a lease extension to uh, relative to the capital value of the landlord's interest but that's not really a, a, a cap on ground rent in the way that uh, most people would understand it ground rents might be addressed uh, by the new government after july both uh, main political parties labor and conservative have uh, included in their manifestos a proposal for rent reform uh, but neither have yet indicated any detailed proposals for what it is that they're going to do there are some uh, really positive changes for leaseholders uh, the uh, right to extend your lease is now to a lease of 990 years that applies to both flats and houses previously uh, the right to an extended lease was limited to the remaining current term plus an additional 90 years for flats or plus an additional 50 years for houses. Um, both can now be extended to a, a total of 990 years. Uh, conveyancing for uh, short and medium term leaseholds has become a bit simpler. Uh, the government have removed, uh, or when the act is effective, it will remove the two year qualification, uh, two year ownership qualification uh, for flats. So you won't have had to have owned a flat for two years before you're able to extend it. They've also removed the one year waiting period between services of notices. Uh, previously, if you served a notice for a lease extension and then withdrew it for whatever reason, you'd have to wait a year before we can serve another one. Now you can serve another one, uh, or when the act is effective, you'd be able to serve another one uh, almost immediately afterwards. That would allow tenants to take advantage of fluctuations in market conditions. Uh, a tenant would serve a notice on, for argument's sake, the 1st of June. Uh, and let's say the market uh, trended downwards so that the lease extension premium would be less, they'd be able to withdraw that first notice and reserve it in, say, December, uh, assuming they haven't completed their lease and take advantage of that downturn in the market in terms of calculation of the premium. The big change um, is uh, what's often called the abolition of marriage value, that they're not abolishing it, they're simply not making it payable by the tenant. Um, that will have a significant effect on uh, leases, extension of leases below 80 years, uh, but that's subject to what the government do about deferment and capitalisation rates, which isn't yet clear. Uh, deferment rates um, are, are part of a calculation. It, it's a percentage used to calculate the present value of something that will happen in the future. Uh, so in the context of lease extensions, it's used to calculate the value today of the landlord's rights to receive the flat back at the end of the lease in, say, 25, 50 or 100 years time. Deferment rates were set uh, in 2007 in a case called Earl of Cadogan Sportelli uh, at 5% for flats and 4.75% for houses. Uh, in the evidence of the Commons Committee on the 16th of January this year, 2024, the government's expert indicated that he would be in favour of deferment rates as low as 3.5%. That might be adopted by the government. And uh, many valuers have pointed out that if the deferment rates are set lower than the Sportelli rates of 5% for flats and 4.75% for houses, um, then for shorter leases below 80 years, it may well ameliorate any reduction achieved from the removal of that marriage value. So a lease extension may cost the same or slightly more, um, but the way it's calculated um, is slightly different. Uh, and this is something that I and other valuers pointed out uh, at the very beginning of this process, that uh, abolition of marriage value uh, to be effective shouldn't be replaced by an increase um, in the part of the premium payable by reference to deferment rates. Um, capitalization rates are slightly different. They're used to calculate the present capital value of the right to receive an income over a fixed period of time. Um, so they're used in lease extensions and collective enfranchisements or freehold purchases um, to value the, the current present capital value now of the right to the landlord's right to receive the rent over the term. Now, um, all leases contain different variations on how ground rents are uh, payable. Some leases will contain a fixed ground rent that's payable the same over the entire period of the term. Some leases will include 
uh, capitalization as uh, sort a of ground rents that uh, increase by set periods. So, two hundred pounds for the first fifty years, two hundred fifty pounds for the next fifty years, or something like that. Sometimes they're dynamic and reviewable by reference to uh, RPI uh, or the capital value of the, the, the freehold or, or something else. And it's going to be very difficult, I think, for the government to prescribe one rate that applies to all of those circumstances um, uh, all in one go. Changes that are uh, on the statute book that once made effective will have a big difference um, and make collective enfranchisement um, a lot simpler. Um, the first is that they've increased the non-residential restriction um, from 25% to 50%. Now, currently, you couldn't um, uh, collectively enfranchise a building if 25% of, uh, more than 25% of the uh, square footage was non-residential. That's going up to 50%. Now, that uh, will make many more buildings eligible for collective enfranchisement that aren't eligible for collective enfranchisement currently. Um, the... Uh, the other big change uh, is that the uh, tenants exercising the right to buy their freehold are only required to buy out intermediate head leases to the extent that they are reversionary to participating tenants. They're not required to buy out parts of the head lease um, that relate to non-participating tenants. So if you have a block of flats that has 20 people in it and only uh, 11 of those people are taking part, the 11 taking part would only have to buy out the part of the head lease that relates to those 11 flats. They wouldn't have to buy out the part of the head lease that relates to the remaining nine non-participating uh, tenants. Now that will um, hopefully substantially reduce the uh, uh, purchase price payable for a collective enfranchisement because the tenants aren't required to buy out um, non-participating tenants head leasehold interests. Strokes of it I think are good. Um, so uh, tenants will uh, now be able to increase their lease to a much longer term of 990 years. Uh, in the context of lease extensions, conveyancing uh, will become a bit simpler. You no longer have to uh, wait for a seller to serve a notice and to be assigned to the buyer. The buyer can serve their own notice to extend a lease uh, immediately after they uh, purchase. Um, whether they will become cheaper will depend very much on what the government do with deferment rates and capitalization rates. If they follow the current government advice of setting deferment at, for example, three and a half percent, then lease extensions may cost the same or perhaps more. So much to be uh, wait and see uh, for what happens with the uh, statutory instrument that introduces deferment rates and capitalization rates, probably the back end of 2025, early part of 2026.